Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Scott, and I am the Global Community Manager for NASA Space Apps Challenge. And this weekend, as you may already know, is our COVID-19 challenge, which is focused on finding solutions to COVID-19 related problems. And I have the honor right now of speaking with one of our global winners who um, has experienced himself with seeing a problem, actually experiencing an issue, and then creating a solution to respond to that issue, which I think is a powerful lesson that anyone could learn. Um, so without further ado, I have Marco, one of our global winners in the category Best Mission Concept uh, from Costin at Space Apps London. Marco, how are you doing today? I'm great, thanks. Thank you, thank you very much for inviting me for this interview. And I'd just like to say a warm hello to everyone who is listening to this interview. Yeah, a warm, a very warm hello, and I'm sure that they appreciate it. Um, and as we were talking about even before, you know, things are so different in the world. We're all isolated and everyone's at home, but it's cool that we can be connected. And I hope that the Space Apps Weekend is a chance for people to feel more connected than they have been um, in recent months. But just to start out, um, I think a good place is just what is Costin? And, and who was your team? Who are your team members that you worked with to develop Costin? And yeah, so today, I should say, because I know that, that that's the name of the project. Sorry, sorry? Phoenix, I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I'll first talk about Costin just very briefly. Um, I'm an um, engineering student at the University of Cambridge, and the idea to come to NASA uh, Space App Hackathon came from my friend Jacob, who proposed to me um, to do this hackathon, and I had never gone to one before. I had heard of them before because in, in Cambridge it's very talked about, but I just never participated in one because I just never felt like I could really uh, bring much to the table, as, as you would say. But it was a very easy time during the start of the term. So I was like, sure, why not? And also it's uh, organized by NASA. It sounds really cool. Um, also there's a free food, <laughs> which, is, which is great. Um, so I went, so Team Costin is formed of four Cambridge students, me, Jacob, Noah, and uh, Richard. And we all came to the hackathon without really having um, an idea of what we wanted to do, we just wanted to arrive and explore what um, the challenges were and then from there just kick off and, and actually start a project and, and find a solution. Um, so the, as soon as we were given the different challenges from uh, NASA, we were scrolling through them and we were trying to find ones that, that we particularly found interesting um, from each person. And the one that I found particularly interesting was spot that fire um version 2.0 and i still remember that it was just a very natural link to that one because it connected to me in a, in a personal way um the all the other challenges that um, my teammates were interested by were things that they just generally found um interesting and that they wanted to explore more and try to find um a solution for but Spot That Fire had a personal meaning to me because um, it was about trying to mitigate wildfires. And my family had actually been impacted um, by wildfires in Greece. Um, so as soon as I read that uh, challenge brief, it just hit a certain spot in my heart. And I was like, yeah, this is the one that I feel most strongly about and most passionate about. And the one that I think we could um, try and really input our energy and try to create something um, out of it and hopefully uh, tackle a solution, which coincidentally was a bit before all the wildfires that happened in Australia. Um, and that was just pure coincidence. But basically Phoenix was an app that tried to integrate the community into combating um, wildfires by trying to organize uh, where everyone was and using uh, NASA data from um, Landsat A and firms to try and predict how a fire, once um, found by a certain individual, um, how it would spread based on uh, different weather patterns. Um, and then that information would be used to try and alert certain people and, and create safe houses 
for which affected people could go and, and stay with uh, neighbors or people in a safe area so that they wouldn't uh, get impacted. Yeah, one thing that, that's so interesting about that and, and your story is that you managed to connect your own personal experience with like a, one of the challenges and of course with the solution you created. But I know a lot of people, you know, actually similar to your, your teammates as you're describing, a lot of people will look at the challenges and think what's something that's interesting to me, what's a topic that stands out rather than thinking about how their story links to the potential solution they're creating. Uh, yeah. And right now, when, when people are starting to watch this video, will be toward the start of the hackathon. It's, and so I want to know from you, like, what is the process that you went through to go from, like, this is an, uh, to go from I don't know what my idea is going to be or I don't know what our project's going to be to really deciding on that this would be the right thing to work on? So from, as I said before, when we were trying to read all the different projects, I remember we, we got out on a whiteboard and we just wrote down all the ones that um, we really felt like we could generate impact um, per se. And they had written all the ones that, that they were curious to, to talk about and I had also found some that I just that aligned with my general uh, curiosity. For example, one involved trying to design a plane with no wires. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I like planes, so I'll, I'll write that down on the whiteboard. But I can't really describe it. It was more of just a personal feeling that I had within myself that I just had a natural connection um, with a problem that I had experienced. So it was just a natural link that then I tried to persuade my team to pursue because they had other um, yeah. challenges to, um, that they wanted to, to carry out. But I was like, guys, this is something that I think has a lot of meaning, especially to me. So I would also appreciate it if we could focus on that. Um, however, if, if we find another project that, we, that has more impact per se, then we can obviously pursue that. But then I think they also began to process the fact that actually when you try and solve a problem if you're a person that has experienced it you you just are able to connect to it deeper and and actually um generate a more impactful project i think yeah and it, and i could speak to this too just about your project having been at space apps london uh, last year and just seeing the, not only a little bit of the process and what you were doing, you and your team were doing to create your projects, but it was also interesting to get to see the other projects. And I really, and something that I've told people time and time again, is that it is so powerful when you have that, that story um, or mm -hmm. that, that experience that really deeply ties you to what you're creating because it does a couple of things. It, it helps you when you're pitching your story. Um, so that's one tip I would give to any participants who are watching and wondering what to work on um, and how to tell that story. But um, it also helps you commit to the project or commit to the cause at least. And so maybe Costin won't be something that you'll, or maybe Phoenix won't be something that you'll work on for years and years to come. But I mean, it's still an experience you had that I'm sure will inform your path going forward. Um, of course. And, yeah. yeah. And so one thing I want to know from, from you is just like, what has happened? What has it been like since winning uh, space apps as a global winner? And uh, let's just start there because I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> are wondering what it's like to actually win. So it was, it always became a surprise, a very, um, pleasant surprise. Um, the news actually, I remember I was in the mountains, coincidentally with Jacob, which was uh, one of the team members, and we we're going to email that the results were coming out, and we we're about to go to bed because uh, we were skiing the next morning, so we wanted to go to bed early, but we just couldn't not check. Um, so we're just talking, and then we just kept refreshing our emails, and then as soon as we saw an email from NASA, we just opened it and like he's like Marco we won 
and then I just naturally screamed because it was one of the first things that I think I, I personally um, won on a global scale and I was extremely proud of. Um, and it's just been great. It really has been. And it's not only a thing that impacts you, I think, on a personal level that just makes you believe in yourself more and pushes yourself to to do more projects and embark yourself in, in more journeys that you're not comfortable with. Um, but it just also allows you to, yeah, just humbly accept that at times you can contribute to projects, which, um, as I said before, you, you wouldn't be, which you didn't think that you could contribute to. Because it's something that I felt personally uh, going to Space Apps because I want all my team members were very techy people, whereas I was the more creative one per se. And I felt like I couldn't really contribute to it because I couldn't write any code. Um, well, I could, but like I couldn't at the level that they did. So I just felt like I was a bit of a dead weight. But then throughout those two or three days, I actually felt my role, as you said before, as, as a storyteller, it was actually to try and as a funnel to connect all the talent that, that the team members had in actually creating this app, but try and funneling it, it to a specific purpose and like a solution, which was to uh, create Phoenix. Um, and then throughout the two days, just involvement in, in the team process became much more and then in the final pitching of the um, presentation that, that then I, re I really participated in and, and talked about the story and everything. And, yeah. yeah, it's just a really great experience. Yeah. And I think the thing that, that I would stress that I've heard in talking with other global winners is that diverse teams are so powerful and, and we talk about diversity within Space App so much, but I know that like the teams that have just developers, you know, there are those design skills, those storytelling skills, those those science skills, those engineering skills that you that you might miss out on. And so when you have that mix of skills in one place, that's what's really powerful and, and effective, not just when it comes to space apps, of course, but yeah. in general when it comes to developing a solution to a big problem that you see or a big problem in the world. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So like as as you said, it made me realize that even though I might not be the most techie person, I could still contribute to a team just because that different perspective um, allows you to input ideas that maybe other people who had a different background didn't um, think of. And it has what, and FaceApp, like ever since winning FaceApp, it has given me that confidence to just join more projects. Um, and even though I didn't feel comfortable initially in joining, I knew that I could create some value, um, just as you said, from coming from a, from a different background of being a more creative uh, design person. Um, and I've definitely seen um, the benefits of that. And I, I would encourage everyone to believe in themselves. And no matter if you think that you will not be able to contribute, if you put the effort and you really are passionate about something, you will definitely be able to do so and achieve great things. Yeah, I wonder what what is your vision for what's ahead, not only for Kostin, but for you, just as you continue to embark on your journey uh, as a problem solver and as a storyteller, I'll say. Um, so I've really grown to like, as, as you said, the, the, the thing about when you have a story and you actually want to broadcast it um, to a certain group of people. And looking forward, as you said, I think my role in that becomes more of an entrepreneurial role. Um, so I'm currently studying engineering, but even though I do love it, I just keep thinking of, of different ways I could create something that could solve certain problems. And it's, and it's a very entrepreneurial thing that I think I will follow that I think space apps kind of confirmed within me that I have the ability to, if I have um, something that I relate to, I have the ability to execute it well and um, actually commit to a project and, and rend it into fruition. So I think looking forward, I'll be taking more of a um, 
creative and entrepreneurial role in trying to create something um, apart from uh, Phoenix that we did last year. Yeah, definitely. Well, I would say to keep, keep, me, keep me updated, keep the rest of the Space Apps community updating, keep telling the story of what you're pursuing and what you're working on, and we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. But just as we wrap up this interview, I, I would love to know if you have any other advice or wisdom for the Space Apps community, um, especially as they get ready to dive deeper into the weekend and get ready to, um, you know, really cement their projects. Yeah, so um, I think no matter how daunting it can seem, especially at the start, um, given that you might read a challenge or confront a problem and not really know how to approach it, the weekend that you have, um, especially talking with other people from diverse backgrounds, I think being condensed in this atmosphere of, of what a hackathon is really rend like really creates certain magical things that allows you to actually solve a problem in such a short space of time. Um, and my team especially, I remember we, we gave ourselves um, three hours to sleep every night <laughs> and we put an alarm because we didn't want to sleep more than that because we had a certain goal and we wanted to achieve it. So it's just persistence and um, that will definitely uh, carry you forward and just know that by working on this and trying to solve a problem um, like COVID, you're, you're going to achieve great things. Awesome. Thanks so much, Marco. And we're, we're excited. Speaking of achieving great things, uh, just to see all that you have in store going forward. But thanks again for, for being here and for sharing your story. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for, for the invitation.